They are empathetic. They are grounded. Fame does not bother them. They care about one thing, that's the connection they have between themselves and also the fans. And, you know, we've experienced success and we were welcomed home with open arms after coming home from Pyeongchang, but also um, what could have been deemed a failure coming home from Sochi. And when we thought we disappointed the country, we returned home to a nation that was so proud of us and people who still wanted us to feel um, Do you feel like? Chinese is a different word there. Oh, I just, I took it over. <laughs> Do you, let's get back to that person. People from all around the world that have followed us, supported us, been there for us. So we, we take our jobs very seriously. Anytime that we have a chance to be in the ice, or on the ice, uh, whether it's show or uh, a competition, yeah, we, we want to make sure. Good evening. Can I get one more? <laughs> What's your ritual? You're standing in that tunnel, you hear the crowd. Well, that was That's a lot of fun. Question. And it work. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I mean constantly are working on I didn't. It's your name, right? <laughs> <laughs> See what this one I'm talking about. <laughs> but I think, no, we have worked on our relationship a lot, and uh, we've worked with uh, professionals to help us guide it. I mean, we're very lucky that we have, we do have a great friendship, and we've gotten along for the majority of our career. And, we don't name call, we don't do any of that stuff. Uh, we've always kind of been in each other's corner, but we're together all the time. And it, it is a lot of pressure that we're under, and we've had to work on our relationship to get to where it is, and it's something that we still continue to work on uh, in order to be the best business partners that we can be. But, and whether we're really fun or not, we both find each other hysterical, so when you talk about keeping it fresh, we're laughing a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you know I am. But, <laughs> but when you're on... Yeah, I can make faces behind you back. <laughs> Unlike other sports where there's camaraderie and talking on the field or, yeah. or on the ice for hockey, sometimes saying nothing is actually saying a lot. And I find that in the sport that you're in, there is no talking on the ice. So my question for you is, when you're in the moment, when you're performing, how do you know what each other is thinking? What is the thought process without actually communicating? We do talk. Or do you have a form of communication? Yeah, we talk like this. We talk a lot. Yeah. How? And how, how? Which is funny because when I think when we're off the ice, um, I'm always the one that talks a lot or kind of doesn't. But then in the high pressure situation, that, that switches. Because when we get nervous, I just talk, 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 and I know that now he's nodding along and, and not, not really <laughs> taking what he's saying, but I just need to. I need to hear myself say things, but we do talk, but also there's a sense of, with programs that we've trained and rehearsed, we have keywords that we've kind of implemented into each part of the program, so we'll remind Don't each other. Don't let me down. <laughs> <laughs> we'll remind each other of, of those kind of keywords. Actually, he does that on practice sometimes. We'll, we'll skate around the team and he'll say, Don't you disappoint me. And I think people think that he's serious. He doesn't have a joke. But she can't let the joke run. She has to stop being like, he's not, he's not. Because <laughs> <laughs> she couldn't take someone that was that. But we do, we, we communicate verbally a lot. But also, I mean, we know each other so well that it's just kind of a, a certain look, a squeeze of a hand. Um, during an actual performance. During a performance. I think there's a oh, lot yeah. that also uh, we can just communicate. Through the eyes. Yeah. <laughs> and, if, and if you miss... A move, hypothetically. Yeah. Do the two of you instinctively know how to get back into the rhythm of the game? With Marilyn and Charlie, she was lighting off fireworks during their program. Turn the music off. Yeah, she had music way down one time, then way up, and then the next She'd time. She'd get other skaters to get in your way, and then she had this whistle that every time she blew the whistle, we had to fall and get back up, which is the most exhausting thing in a program, in a four-minute program, and sometimes you'd fall seven or eight times, but... I mean, the idea of embracing failure and using that to your advantage, because how many times do we show up in the rink and, and say, like, when we have clean programs, that doesn't really help us. When we feel great and, and skate well, I and mean, we're not learning much from that. So we, we embrace those days where we were sick or injured or tired and things weren't going exactly our way because it gave us a chance to fight through that. And maybe something that our competitors didn't always do, at least not conscientiously. And when we made a mistake in a big competition, because it did happen, um, most of the time we weren't ever really that upset about the mistake. The thing that we were most upset about is that we let it affect the rest of the performance. Um, I found that in a couple of, of performances where I made, 
Not only did I maybe have a misstep, but I mean, it happened. So we're trying our best. We're skating pretty fast, we'd like to think. Um, close to get together. Ice is a slippery surface. There's a lot of risk involved, and sometimes you're going to make a mistake. But one of the things that we had to do was start to... <laughs> we had to start to kind of snap back into our characters and, uh, and make sure that, you know, especially when I make a mistake and I come back, that's the third person to always say, that's not me. Uh, moving on, on to the next thing. We really had to put work on staying focused on the exact moment that we're in, not 10 seconds ahead, not 10 seconds behind. Okay, so when you talk about missteps and failure, I just want to go back to 2006 for a second. And J.K. Rowling, who, as you know, is the author of Harry Potter, said that um, you haven't lived if you haven't failed at something. Mm -hmm. When you didn't qualify for the Olympics, what made you decide to get up and commit to 2010? Was it a combination of... Provided, or I mean, being 20 and 22, we were naive, and we weren't quite aware of the magnitude of the event, and I think that helped us. I was also very injured, so we needed to come together and shut out the rest of the world. So when we took the ice, we were just those seven and nine-year-old little kids who had this big dream, and, and we looked at each other and just said, let's take this one step at a time. And, and somehow we had this laser focus on one another that we didn't notice the judges, we didn't see the people in the stands, we didn't think about the cameras that were on us, we certainly didn't think about the 30 million other people home tuning in. Uh, it was just a very personal moment. And I think finding flow, which is the ultimate goal in, in any kind of activity and in sport, um, we found that and then we chased it for nine years. We chased that feeling that we had in Vancouver and we weren't ever able to to replicate that until 2010. Speaking of 2010, um, a whole bunch of things happened to us. We felt, I remember we asked Marina at the beginning after London Worlds um, in 2013 that if she thought we could win the Olympics and she could answer our head coach. We didn't feel confident and strong enough to leave at that time. Looking back in hindsight, we should have. Our agent um, left us. Uh, we just didn't feel like we were getting a ton of support nationally, so we felt so alone and didn't really know how to handle that. But from that, probably came the most important year of our career because we learned how to do everything ourselves <laughs> and relied completely on each other. Not that a lot of people know this. You guys are getting the chapter. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, my job, right? yeah. <laughs> yeah, we we rely completely on each other for that. And for those games, I mean, we barely came back to work to talk to our coaches. And we, we joked, and, and why we knew to go to Patrice after is Patrice could see it in us. He would walk, in figure skating, you never talk to another coach's teams. And he would walk right past Marina and Johnny and come into the warm up area and hold us his hand, head in his hand, and mine. And and he'd say, you're going to be great. Yeah. <laughs> and then he'd leave. And then Mike Babcock just saw the same thing too. And he'd come into the gym and be like, why are you doing this? In a very different way with the greatest pair ever. Um, Thanks. Yeah. Sorry. But I mean, that, from that, we just did it ourselves almost. And that's why Sochi, I mean, we have two Olympic silver medals that we are so proud of. And we always say that to kids, but for some reason our silver medals are really tarnished. So we always say in our speeches, oh, we're just as proud as the silvers. And then we show them the medals, and they're like, it looks like it. <laughs> but at the same time, not, we didn't love the material that we had, but we really had great skate. We had the best skate in Sochi that we've ever done in those And as a whole, experience-wise, Sochi was maybe our favorite Olympic Games. Mm -hmm. And it's something that people are hesitant to broach that subject with us. So yeah, we left very happy. We were worried to come back to Canada because we wanted our home to stay and go now. Yeah. More so for Canadians than for ourselves home. And we felt like, oh crap, we failed. Are you okay? Are you me? No, no, no. I'm not even thinking that's what I want. I'm usually the one that's like, everywhere is. Y'all It's like watching all this unfold. <laughs>
and everybody skates because it was right there for us. We just wanted to make sure that we did. We had a quite a big week going into the free. That night before, I remember visualizing the program, and I would get to this one part, and I kept kicking Scott and and tripping, and, and I've never done that in the program in practice. Yeah. But in my visualization, I thought I just kept doing that, and I wondered why I have to start over. And I couldn't get through it. And I remember getting to that part of the program and being so incredibly nervous for it. This, oh. I created this whole scenario <laughs> in my mind. Really helping myself. In that free dance, actually, you could see some of the, and we could feel some of those jitters. Because we had, we had really uh, kind of knocked it out of the park all year, uh, that ball of free dance. And you know, we started off a little shaky. And then, like, there are some moments when, especially on TV, it shows it perfectly. I wasn't really paying attention to where we were on the ice, and we were that close. To be clipping us off, or that we would have been down in the mess. And that, we probably would have been off the podium. And I edited the wrong way. That's hilarious. But <laughs> I, for some I went to like, come out of this thing one way, and I was like, oh, that's not the right way, which in 20 years, well, then it was only like 13 or 14 years of skating together. I've almost never been right on that, but I decided at the Olympics I'd take the <laughs> So I stopped and I looked up, and there were no judges. <laughs> but I mean, the, there was. Also, photographers on that side that were really thankful because they, they got the money shot and they got their own side. Um, when you are on the podium and you hear the national anthem, we will never experience this. <laughs> well, that's not true. No, well, I won't. I won't. I won't experience this. Yeah. What is the. You might not win the 2018 ice dance, that's probably still tough. <laughs> You hear the national anthem, people are cheering, gold medalists, family and friends, what's it like? It's, uh, it's surreal. It is very surreal. Yeah, I'm, I'm, if, I'm, if I'm honest, I'm having a moment right now. Okay, but, it, but you're not... hearing you say that, I think we've had so little time to reflect, and I'm looking at that photo and just really trying to put myself back into the moment, and I just remember wanting to be so present and wanting to take it in, and it was raining that night, I think, right? And um, really what's happened. Um, <laughs> and seeing my mom and my sister in the this crowd and just looking at Scott and the moment when he got his medal I think was probably the highlight of my game because I was so proud of him and what he'd accomplished as an athlete. And yeah, I mean there's just such a sense of pride, right? You you don't make belief and um, the national anthem carries such weight and there were so many Canadian flags in the, the crowd, and you know we were the ones who were fortunate enough to, to stand on the podium, but there was a whole team of people behind us, and particularly our B210 team, our off-ice integrated service team in Montreal. I mean, they were dedicated each and every day, and and we felt like they were the reason why we, we took the plane to San Diego and felt like we had already won, uh, because the work has been done. And so I think I was just trying to I was certainly feeling grateful, but I was also just trying to hold on to that feeling. I think when you say that you had a moment, and I'm going to reflect and speak on behalf of everyone that's here, and probably all the fans we met from coast to coast, because I don't think that, I understand that it resonates, but from the other side of the podium, you have no idea what you've done for this country, what you've done for the hundreds and thousands and millions of people that your name is synonymous with Canada. Your name is synonymous with culture. Your name is synonymous with the that we have up here. So when you say, <laughs> when, you say, when, you say when you say you're having a moment, it's that seven, eight, or nine year old who is sitting at home and saying to themselves that I could do that because they did. Every single person in this room, every single person in this country, I'm confident. Just like we have ketchup chips and Smarties, we, all, we also have Tess and Scott. Is, is it not natural? It is. So I'm going to ask just a few more questions. Um, Tessa, you broke the sign. <laughs> the team has asked for $20, and they want to know where we should send the invoice. To you, obviously. I That's I right. That. So Scott, <laughs> you, how many people have viewed that video? 150,000 times. <laughs> the only person here that hasn't seen it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this is, we're getting towards the end, so this, this is just, these are fast, fun questions. Oh, yes, I love these. Yeah. All right. We're in a bookstore, so I need to know, what are you currently reading? Oh, 
gargoyle, which um, a fan gave me as they came through a meet the line. And as, as we went on with our tour, we, I found I was getting more books, which was just the most thoughtful, generous thing from um, people meeting. Yeah, we have a great Google library now from the tour. Uh, I'm reading Contessa's book, which is um, unbelievable. But I, I think when we first met him, I told him I read it. <laughs> and we got inducted with them to the Walk of Fame last week, so I've been pretending that I've read it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, mo I'm very excited because we've had a pretty crazy schedule to be there. We produced that tour, which was so much fun. It took a lot of time, and I was just reflecting with you, like, I'm excited to just, like, sit in the last and read a book. <laughs> I had such a long time on my phone, though. Your natural habitat, you say, the yes. bookstore. Yes. Yeah, I know. I just feel like getting out of here. <laughs> <laughs> if you could relive any moment from your career, what would it be in life? Any single moment. Ooh, I mean, if, can we relive it and it would be the same? Exactly. Do you want to change? Because I want to go back to the young chat, like do the free dance yeah. in 2018, but I don't want to rest yet. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be at the moment. This is the way to go. All right. Fine. Let's get you ready. Yeah. You could have one song play every time you enter a room. What would that song be? <laughs> Uh, probably Grace Dew by the hip. Ooh. Okay, I just just off my head. Um, oh God, I'm just a whole I feel like it's a good one. I don't know. I mean, I may have something for you. I've known you for how long? And I, yeah, I couldn't no. have guessed that that was going to be what you said. Well, you, surprises, though. You have the power to read other people's minds. But that also means that they can read yours. <laughs> would you? Would you? Read that? <laughs> right? You're both at. That's fine. You're, you're invisible. Invisible for ten minutes, starting now. What do you do? <laughs> please don't, don't say chocolate. I don't want to do that. Yeah. Say your name backwards. 
So you do know us right away. Do you know? Uh, yeah, not really. No. <laughs> and finally, because this is the final question, what is your go-to dance move? Ooh, great question. Yeah. Test. Okay, so I <laughs>